The gentleman you see before you is Mr. Bob Daly, the 1949 National Stunt Champion. Bob is also the creator of one of the most unique and innovative forms of wing construction in the history of the stunt event. This technique is known as I-beam construction, and it has been used in the design of many highly successful competition stunters over the years. The fact that this construction has endured with little additional refinement for almost 50 years is testament to Bob's genius. The stunt community certainly owes a debt of gratitude to Bob for his achievements, and in appreciation, this video is dedicated to the father of the I-beam wing. I-beam construction was embraced early on by the members of the Strathmore Club of Detroit, and most of the members incorporated it in their original design stunters. One of the first to employ the I-beam concept was Jim Ebiger, who used it to full advantage in his unforgettable Neptune design. Here's Fred Karn's recent rendition of Jim's Neptune under construction. It's easy to see where the name I-beam came from if you study the main spar shape. It forms a capital I if viewed from the end. Strip ribs are positioned on the top and bottom of the wing at each rib station and are supported by the spar. It may look complicated, but it goes together quite easily. The second generation of stunt flyers to use I-beam construction included these two young champions. Steve Woolley used it in his gorgeous Argus design, as did Bill Werwich in the legendary Ares. Bill felt so strongly about the advantages of the technique that he designed and built most of his models around the I-beam wing. He probably knows more about this type of construction than anyone else, by virtue of the number of models he's built over the years. He started building I-beam wing stunners in 1955, and he's still designing around the concept to this day. In this video, Bill will guide us through the construction of an I-beam wing as he produces a replica of his three-time national champion, Ares. Before we hear from Bill, let's take a few moments to look at just a few of the many famous I-beam stunners that he has produced. In 1953, uh, and I suppose you'd have to consider this 53-54 period, 
Uh, I first saw these I-beam airplanes, and uh, I saw as many of, as six or seven at a time. I was very impressed with them. They were uh, all beautifully finished. Um, they were airplanes that uh, were totally outstanding on the field. There was little known about the way they were built. The uh, Strathmore Club pretty much kept them a secret. And uh, I was very interested in them. I was flying Barnstormers at the time, and that was uh, pretty much the, uh, the main airplane of our, our area. And uh, because the information was so hard to come by on these airplanes, uh, it took me a little time uh, to, to come up with uh, any semblance of order of the way they were built. Uh, I built the, the first ones strictly from seeing uh, the, the construction, strictly from seeing the, uh, the combat planes, their combat planes, which were in essence the same, mostly with straight spars, not a true I-beam. Uh, all this seemed very complicated at, uh, you know, the age of 11. And, uh, but when you desire something bad enough, you go ahead and, uh, and you keep finding ways to, uh, to achieve this goal. As I got further along, uh, I received help from uh, Art Pulowski, uh, Milton Booz, Roland McDonald. And uh, while I never received plans, airfoils, numbers per se. Uh, what I did get was a, a true feeling of the way the airplanes were built and finished. And back in, those, in that period, I would build uh, four or five airplanes a year this way because time was uh, you know, not of the essence and uh, the desire was. So I would build in one year, the Thor, the Comet, uh, the Vulcan, I had uh, an ongoing project building summer, winter. There were always airplanes being built while they were being flown. So my knowledge moved fairly rapidly on this, on this type of construction and this type of airplane. And uh, I would have to say that uh, this is... Uh, about a three-year period to really understand the way these airplanes were built. There were no plans, and uh, originally there was no help. So uh, I just w worked my way through it, and uh, what I'm going to do is attempt uh, to show you the way I learned to do it with the, the drawing of the beams, the, the methods. I've had an awful lot of questions as classic has become popular now on uh, the way these airplanes were built and uh, I had assumed because of the kits and things that people pretty much understood the way they were built but I find a lot of the same questions coming from uh, different people. So what I'd like to do is uh, as we move along through this we're going to build a complete Ares wing and uh, try to answer any of the questions as well as showing uh, which we'll initially start with the way the uh, the way the wing is plotted and the way the airfoil is plotted and the way you come up with your beam sizes this whole thing while thought to be complicated complex and appears to be complex uh, and made worse by the air Ambroid kit and things that were uh, you know had a lot of voodoo in them this uh, this will will should pan out uh, to be an, an easier project for most people than they would think. Most of you'll be building an I beam model for the very first time. Uh, you'll be working from these plans. All the work is done for you. All the plotting is, is done ahead of time. Uh, for those of you who wish to design an I-beam for yourself, to build, build your own design model, uh, there's a few guidelines that must be followed. And uh, we'll lay those out for you right now.